Welcome back to my workbench. And I uh, just want to give you guys an update on where we're at now. Well, a couple hours have passed and um, well, a couple hours of work have passed. <laughs> Much more time has passed than two hours. Um, but I have finally got the board populated, uh, probably about 95%. And I'm uh, just going to show you some of the things that were on the board. Um, there's a lot of variety of parts on this board, even though it's actually a very simple circuit. And I'll be talking about the circuit and, and how it works uh, in an upcoming video. Um, but for now, uh, you can see that, uh, well, the most obvious thing you see is the capacitors here that uh, were put in. Uh, there are several of those, and these are electrolytic capacitors. These are polarized, so you have to be careful when you're placing these on the board because they have to go in a in a particular direction in other words they do have a positive and a negative um, that's denoted on the board and it's also denoted on the part itself so you just have to make sure that, um, that those are put in correctly there's another electrolytic capacitor you can see there's a smaller one that sits back here um, the resistors that I started with uh, most of those are blue and they look like they're probably the smallest components on the board, like I thought they would be. Uh, so there are several of those on the board. And this board is actually two uh, circuits. Uh, since this is a stereo model or a dual channel model, uh, you can see that there are uh, two sections of this board that are practically identical. Um, the same parts are used in both places. Um, since both channels are identical, they would obviously have the same uh, parts. So that's the reason that the board looks the way it does. And then over in the far right here in this part of the board is the power supply, uh, where you have the rectification and the filtering. Uh, there's also a voltage regulator here. Interestingly, uh, this circuit differs a little from the original circuit, and they add a 5-volt DC control circuit here from this regulator. Uh, just to feed these relays. Uh, so these little black boxes, so to speak, are uh, small little Omron relays, and they're used to actually give the unit a true bypass mode. Uh, the original LA-2A did not have a bypass mode, and uh, so sound was running through it all the time. Um, so if you want to bypass the unit and have just sound go directly through the unit without being colored by the unit or being controlled by the unit, then you can put this in a true bypass. You can see these uh, white sockets here are tube sockets. Uh, there's several of those. There's a nine pin socket here, the eight pin octal socket there, uh, and then a smaller seven pin socket located here. Uh, and those are for the vacuum tubes, except for the two bigger octal sockets there. Uh, and therefore a module, I'll show you that, uh, that is here. This looks like an old relay socket, but it's actually been converted into an optical module. Uh, and this would actually plug in uh, to the socket here. And you would have one for each circuit. So that's what those sockets are for. So these are just simple ceramic tube circuits, uh, excuse me, uh, ceramic tube sockets. And they're not extravagant. I didn't go for the gold plated pins or anything like that. I'm not a believer in, in that kind of stuff. You know, if, if you can show me in a blind test where that makes a big difference, um, I might would consider it, but uh, I just don't believe that to be the, be the, the fact. Um, uh, when you're buying these tube sockets, you have to be careful uh, that you get the PC mount version or the, uh, some, some just call it PC mount, some call it PCB uh, for PC board, uh, where they have the pins that are made to fit through in a circuit board. Because uh, most of the time the chassis mount sockets uh, have the lugs that you solder wires to and they will not work on this board. Which b brings me to the reason that you see the two empty places here. Uh, there's supposed to be two sockets here just like you see right here and for some reason I did not order enough of them. Um, I know the reason but I'll, I'll take the blame for it. Um, so I have got to order two more tube sockets um, for this particular channel here. Uh, you see some other capacitors. There are different types of capacitors. I showed you the electrolytic capacitors. Uh, there's some mica capacitors or film capacitors, what some people call those. Uh, and you'll see those located here. Uh, there's three red ones and those are three red ones. Um, 
There's a little black one. These look like they've been dipped in plastic. Uh, the capacitor was formed and then it was dipped in plastic. So you see those. Then you got some higher quality capacitors here. Uh, these are made by Solon. Uh, there's four of those. You see that two for each channel. Uh, and then you got the orange drops. Uh, those are very, very popular uh, in audio applications. A very, very good quality capacitor. I've uh, been around a long time. Uh, I think they were originally introduced by a company called Sprague. Um, and, uh, but they're still manufactured. And, but they call those orange drops. They're orange, very high quality, very pricey, a little bit on the expensive side. Um, and uh, then, let's see, what else? Uh, we've got some trimmers here, little trimmer potentiometers for doing adjustments. Um, I showed you the resistors. Then we have the connections. Uh, all the connectors on this particular board uh, will be using the Molex quick connectors so that once the unit is actually wired, uh, you can actually unplug the connectors and pull the board out if you needed to for service or uh, for doing updates and uh, or whatever. Uh, so that's what all the little white headers are here on the circuit board. Uh, then you can see over here on the side, uh, these are little header connections that you would actually stick a wire into and then you could screw and tighten them down uh, here. So these are for the transformer connections over on that side. Um, and uh, let's see, that looks like about it here on the, uh, uh, the board. Uh, I'm missing two large capacitors right here. These are uh, the series output capacitors for both channels uh, for the amplifier circuit. And uh, that's normally a very high quality capacitor. It's a 600 volt capacitor, 10 microfarad. Um, there's some options. That capacitor needs to be a very good one. And I have uh, a couple of different options here. Um, uh, you know, some people try different ones to see if they can hear a difference in the sound. Again, I'm not really uh, totally convinced you can hear a big difference in the sound of, of that capacitor. Some people say you can, some people say you can't. I can't say because I don't have any personal experience with that. Um, I've always used the Sprague Atoms uh, in the past for this particular, and that's what these two blue ones are. Uh, that's the Sprague Atom. Uh, these are uh, 10 microfarad at 500 volt, these two blue ones here. Solon makes this one, this is a 10 microfarad at 630 volt. Uh, a little different composition uh, in the way those two capacitors are made. Uh, that is a very critical component in the circuitry as far as the audio is concerned. So uh, using a different capacitor or using something that's you know not really what it needs to be uh, possibly could affect the sound of the unit. So I'm still going with a very high quality capacitor in that location, just probably not what's considered an audiophile uh, capacitor. Because again, I'm not technically sold on that uh, in my experience. Uh, the back of the board, you can see, uh, hasn't been cleaned yet. Normally when I get through with it, get everything in, uh, I'll take some flux cleaner and a toothbrush, spray on it, and scrub everything down to clean it up and remove the flux residue, flux residue from where I did the soldering. Uh, so that should be very interesting. Uh, so from here, all I have to do, uh, the board is almost complete. All I have to do is uh, put in the uh, two tube sockets that I currently don't have and I have to order. I'll get those in this week. I have to put in my two output capacitors here. Uh, I've got to put in my diodes. Uh, I haven't done that yet. There's four diodes here, two diodes here for the power supply section. That's That will be the rectifiers. And uh, uh, a diode beside each uh, relay. That will be the protection diodes or the surge protection diodes that will go in parallel with the coils of each relay. So, And then once that's done, uh, this board is basically finished. Uh, and then we're going to move to getting this mounted into the enclosure. And once it's mounted into the enclosure, then we'll go and start the wiring process, which will be very interesting. We've got uh, audio transformers to wire in. We've got the power transformer to wire in. Uh, we've got the toggle switches uh, and the uh, potentiometers that will be on the front panel. Those have to be wired in. Uh, the view meters, there will be two of those, obviously, one for each channel. They will be on the front panel as well. So uh, a lot of work. Now, but this has been fun, populating the board. 
Uh, getting the main, this is the only circuit board in the unit, uh, so getting it populated is a big step, uh, but uh, it's probably a lot easier than some of the things to come. So uh, that's just a little update where I'm at. Very excited about this and uh, stay tuned. Uh, this process is getting interesting. Thanks, we'll see you in the next video.